Hi, um, welcome to Maritime Conversations. Um, I'm Swaroop Anand. You know, with me here is uh, Commodore Shrikant Keshnur. Hi, Commodore. How are you doing? Good. As always, wonderful to connect with you, uh, Swaroop. And uh, looking forward to uh, more conversations. Definitely. You know, on 7th September, you know, it was the birth anniversary of a legend of the Indian Navy, Vice Admiral Manohar Prahlad uh, Avati. Uh, Paramesha Seva Medal Veer Chakra, uh, one of the, you know, one of the, uh, you know, he's an icon in the Indian Navy, a very loved admiral. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope we can have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stories uh, about, uh, you know, Admiral Avati, the, the naval officer that he was, the man that he was, the raconteur that he was. Um, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to this uh, conversation, uh, Commodore. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it too. I mean, um, in many ways, uh, a big, big, big favorite of mine. Uh, and the Navy has produced many legions, but um, uh, there was a kind of personal interaction and rapport I had with... Um, oh, you uh, knew him the, pretty well, dare I say? Uh, look, uh, uh, he gave the impression to everyone who associated with him <laughs> to have that sort of feeling and that was the greatness of the man. So I right. can't claim to say pretty well or very well, but I think, uh, you know, there was a certain limit of, uh, if I can say, comfortable acquaintance. And mm. uh, uh, both both my wife and I, uh, of right. course, uh, loved him, as did thousands of Navy people. Uh, right. But but we also, uh, let's say, were, were profoundly honored to have an mm. association where we could, we could uh, sort of meet meet him many times and interact with him many times. So, so yes. And... And I can give, uh, tell about yeah, that. Yeah, lovely. No, I think so. Uh, you know, let's just talk about the uh, the naval officer that he was. I think, uh, you know, uh, right from the get-go, uh, you know, he was uh, quite the topper, right? He topped the federal public service examination, and as it was called, uh, you know, pre-independence, uh, you know, um, got into Dufferin, the training ship Dufferin. And from true, there, true. you know, and I think, the... Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, in fact, uh, let me turn the tables around and say that <laughs> while, while I uh, knew him personally, um, you seem to know so much about him. Uh, right. You have written the wiki profile uh, about him uh, as many right. people. So why don't you tell our our viewers Very interesting. Yeah. about I mean, his career and sure. life? Yeah, and then we'll we'll take on the other thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I think. Very interesting. I think let's do that. Um, you know, so I think, um, you know, a lot of um, things to be uh, talked about uh, Admiral Laverty here. Uh, like I said, he topped the uh, federal public service exam, got into the training ship Dufferin. Um, you know, again, at Dufferin, uh, only the the exceptional students kind of get direct entry uh, or a special entry, as it was called then, into the Royal Indian Navy. Um, so got that, went to you know, uh, Dartmouth, uh, you know, the Britannia Royal Naval College there, spent uh, time there in the UK. So he was a Dartmouth uh, product, uh, you know, Admiral Avati. Uh, came back, um, was uh, on board Ranjit before, uh, you know, going back uh, to Portsmouth for his specialization. And he specialized in signals and communication, you know, and then of course, you know. Long C, uh, long C. Exactly, long C as it as it was called. <laughs> uh, came yeah. back as SEO of Delhi, um, you know, and of course he has also has another Delhi connection. Um, you know, came back uh, after Delhi was you know the XO of Kisna, I think, uh, when it was the uh, training ship. Uh, after that, he went to Staff College, and again another topper. Uh, you know, another uh, um, a place where he topped. Uh, he topped Staff College. Um, after that, he went to London, didn't he, um, as the deputy uh, naval advisor. Uh, and after that, I think in quick succession was uh, Tir and Betwa as the, uh, you know, and the command tenures. And of course, the Veer Chakra, you know, during the war, uh, yeah. you know, as P-31, as it was called. Uh, yes, you know, yes. Uh, uh, they, they were tenures. I'm sure you know that they were tenures at OIC Signal School and uh, you know, uh, uh, also he was, he was, I think, back as DS in Staff College. I mean, he was uh, uh, in the faculty there. So, so that was before the war. 
and uh, and and um, uh, P thirty one, and I think P the side of P thirty one, he was also uh, uh, Noi Kova. You 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 know this better. Right, right, right. I think after the war, he was a naval officer in charge Goa, and um, you know after and halfway through that tenure, he was called in in very interesting. possibly unfortunate circumstances as the ceo of uh, my soy um and of course we'll talk about it uh, you know um, after that again um, you know when go- goes to the royal college of divin studies uh, probably the uh, you know the really up and coming uh, you know naval officers are selected to go on to be uh, to represent india at the rcds course um, you know and after coming back of course was a uh, was the commandant of the nda Uh, and i think after that there were stellar tenures right commandant nda commands the western fleet western uh, chief fleet. of personnel and chief of personnel at uh, you know at the three star rank was his first posting in delhi which delhi. i found really incredible um, you know and of course uh, was the scene seen the west before he retired uh, close to about 40 years in the navy um, and uh, you know i think quite a stellar career Uh, but That's i think so much to talk about so much to talk about and i and i guess there is there so much to talk about his his navy career in terms of what he did and and, and there are several aspects to that uh, uh, the war hero the the uh, you know the inspiration the man who retired as uh, seen sea west uh, but this you know uh, swarup interestingly enough so much to talk about his post navy life too when he starts to sort of loom large as an icon uh, uh, you know o- over the naval firmament so to say um, and he does everything from being a being a model i think for dick jab shootings uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, joining on the board of a couple of companies and then you know being very very environment conscious being associated yep. with the bnh yep. ecology uh, conscious and then of course ultimately also uh, you know his his um, sort of stature as uh, the founder pioneer and um, uh, the greatest canvasser of maritime history uh, and, and uh, similarly also ocean sailing now that ocean sailing is so much gripped uh, people's imagination uh, all over again so i think you see possibly the widest the the widest possible canvas of uh, what a human being can do and and uh, uh, lead such a rich life and contribute so much to the navy and the country so i think um, yeah, you know the first thing that i wanted to talk about commodore was of course the uh, was the war right um, ceo of uh, kamorta uh, you know and p31 uh, in the eastern theater you want to kind of uh, touch upon that a bit and of course the uh, situation or the circumstances that led him to uh, be awarded the vrc like you brought out I mean, if we cut a little into the background uh, you brought out that uh, you know that these guys did their training um, in britain um, either i mean his seniors did it during the war avati uh, joined just after the war but right. they sort of got to see many of the people who were involved i mean the war was very strong in memory uh, so the experiences the exposure the tactics the big legends of the war you know all of these people were very much visible to them and i think um, in, in some ways they had the best training ground this this is not taking up for for colonialism in, in any way i think it was a terrible thing that happened but to the extent that the world's uh, uh, biggest navy was the training ground for some of our pioneers i think it provided a very useful place now when you cut uh, 20 25 years later uh, we have changed the paradigm so to say we have moved uh, in the mid 60s to buying russian equipment and uh, and the ptrs the kamorta class are russian uh, they are they're very small ships compared to the bigger ships that that we are used to seeing of similar counterparts you know i mean the the, the, the half the tonnage you know, almost but they pack in a lot of punch they pack in lots of right. weapons so right. uh, it's interesting um, you know avti has written in one of the quartetic volumes uh, i i mm. if, I, if, I, if i'm not wrong he was the second commanding officer of kamorta he just he's just taken over 
right. I think from, from Nikki Natkar, if I'm not wrong. And and mm-hmm. he talks about it was a senior shape, so he was a P31. So he talks right. about what the change meant, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but whatever it was, I mean, they adapted quickly. And and remember, these ships we used to toss up terribly. And Avati was not many people know that, but he was seasick, you know. So so. <laughs> The war clouds loomed on the horizon in 1971, and right. uh, the two of the petyas were sent west, and you know two two stayed. Um, sorry, three went west, and two Kamorta and I think uh, Kavrati uh, stayed in the east. Now they were a part of the new nascent uh, eastern fleet that was formed under Admiral S. X. Sharma, uh, which right. just in fact the eastern fleet was formed just a month uh, before. The war started, though they had been exercising before. Now, now remember, this was a very small sort of, you know, uh, you can't really call it a fleet in traditional sense. It had the aircraft carrier, it had it had the Brahmaputra and the Bias, and it had the two Petyas, you know, um, right. so, so Kamorta and Kavrati. And that's that's all they had for most of the time. I mean, there were other right. small units, but that's all they had for most of the time. And I think what they did with that was, was sort of brilliant uh, because yes. they strangulated they strangulated uh, East Pakistan completely. So mm-hmm. specifically, specifically, I think what the Kamortas did was provide a mixture of uh, anti-air defense. They were, they were powerful, right. as indeed Vitwa and Brahmaputra. But Kamorta also had anti-submarine warfare equipment. Uh, so when there was searches for submarines as a part of the fleet, um, they were the first to be sent. Uh, and right. I think um, I think one specifically his Veer Chakra citation mentions his action in anti-submarine action uh, in the early days of the war. I right. would think it also amounts in some ways to his recognition overall. Uh, one mm. as P31. Remember, he was a squadron commander, and all the five petyas were involved in the war. So, in right. a sense, it's also a recognition of his role as P31 that all all of the five petyas took part in the war. Uh, and and his own role as commanding officer Kamorta uh, in leading, uh, in being a part of the Eastern Fleet, in taking part in anti-submarine action, in protection of the aircraft carrier, and right. many other things, and many other things that a fleet ship does. And and remember, for Petias, it was tougher than uh, than for the B class. Not for any other reason. Their their water capacities, their living conditions are are yeah. uh, much much harder and uh, much tougher. You know. So I think that's that's in a sense the canvas of his uh, role in seventy one war. Now the interesting thing, the interesting thing, uh, is that he almost didn't make it. You know, in the sense really? that uh, just a couple of days, uh, I think on the thirty first of us, he had his I think main generator four hundred kilowatt DA or something back up, and and, um, and they felt very sad because they realized that if they uh, didn't get back on line, they they would not be able to take part. The fleet commander will detach them. And I right. think in in distant, you know, Andamans where there were uh, very little, very little shore support, relying right. entirely on the uh, ingenuity and innovation of the ship staff, uh, they mm. were able to make major, major repairs. And he was able to, you know, sort of join in the, the nick of the time as the uh, fleet started sailing northward. So, so this is an interesting aspect. But also in all this, he didn't lose his sense of um, humor and uh, touch. Um, right. uh, S.K. Gupta, Gigi Gupta tells me that right. um, on their way up, when they did one of these uh, replenishment at sea operations, uh, Avati sent a special special bottle of uh, champagne or wine to Gupta, knowing that right. he would be leading the attack to say, you know, uh, all the best and sort of uh, bust them sort of message. And these were the sort of personal... Uh, touch things that he was always famous for, you know. Right, right, right. Um, and so I think it's very interesting that you kind of brought in the personal touch, um, you know, um, Commodore, because uh, after the war, while he was uh, naval officer in charge Goa, of course, um, you know, like I had mentioned, he, uh, in the middle of his tenure, was brought back uh, to the Mysore um, as the commanding officer uh, in somewhat... Uh, again, uh, interesting and unfortunate circumstances. And, uh, you know, I believe in those circumstances, a man like, uh, you know, then Captain Avati 
have, was chosen for a specific reason uh, you want to kind of talk about that a little yes um, uh, you know there was it's, it's a matter of uh, you know uh, sort of public knowledge that there was yep. a sort of uh, mutiny unfortunate event of the mysore right. uh, this has been written about in uh, some books um, uh, in fact uh, 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 ronnie perera's book and uh, book on ronnie uh, uh, says how how admiral kripal singh also suffered because of right. that as a fleet commander uh, he right. was sort of, uh, held responsible for this uh, the point is that you know avati told me separately and of course we mm-hmm. were not discussing the mysore we were discussing uh, uh, the naval uprising of 1946 That's and right. he, he told me that that is the time they were in uk and their their superintendent of their college called them had a chat mm-hmm. and sa- said that look all big navies need the occasional you know mutiny to sort of uh, go go up to progress in their career and i i guess as a historian i mean if you are in the executive end of decision making you got to take firm quick decisions to quell that and that's what the navy did But as a historian, as a historian, you have the luxury of taking long, long views, and right. and I think uh, I think these, these are things that navies take in their stride as a part of of uh, you know sort of growing up. Uh, but mm-hmm. what is remarkable, and you brought it out, I think Avati was the perfect man for the moment. Uh, he applied the healing touch. Uh, mm. Whatever was needed to be done was done. he had had good exposure he had been as you say sc of ready class he had been the fleet communications officer uh, sailing on the mysore with with uh, you know uh, charles nanda and all that so i think he had an instinctive sense of the ship uh, right. he yeah. had a he had a fantastic human touch he had the ability to be both both firm and decisive at one end and concerned and compassionate and humane at the other and so so those those combination of those qualities meant that he was able to apply a healing touch he was able to give give it very quickly and for many years i think his views were sought on how to avoid these sort of situations and i think that that sort of percolated down very well and uh, uh, his knowledge in that regard was was utilized and i that i think he would he would freely uh, dispense his uh, advice on such matters and so on. so i think in many ways you know he was he was he was good and and in in different ways at different times uh, the human touch aspect whether you needed to be persuasive whether you needed to be pushy whether you needed to be inspirational uh, whether you needed to be motivating people i think uh, uh, avati's great great catalog of human qualities came out uh, in different ways at different times right right um super so i think um, uh, you know if you can now commodore give us uh, a 360 degree view of uh, the man you know we've talked about his uh, stellar naval career um, but if you can kind of give us a 360 degree having seen him uh, you know from close quarters of course after he retired but you know uh, a 360 degree of the man a view of the man Uh, yes i mean uh, it's always a challenge it's difficult encapsulating you know mm-hmm. on his ninth on his 90th birthday i had written a sort of very fond affectionate tribute called the uh, young man and the sea you know right. <laughs> talking of the young young 90 year old and uh, right. so so and and yet despite that it's always kind of difficult to put in everything that he did because the nuts and bolts of the career itself are are stupendous and then if you add layers of what he did uh, elsewhere and something like that so there are far too many but let me try and put a few of the things one of mm. course is like i said i met him uh, the first time when i was a, a, a divisional officer in nda and i was a messenger right. who had, who actually had to look after the uh, the guest house and he had come to stay as a guest and right. uh, and i was floored by his charm and the way he sort of you know interacted personally though mm. by that time one had already heard of him so much and in yes. fact he had he had commented very nicely about an article that i had written uh, for the signal school journal now ah, now remar- so. remarkably when i mentioned this to him he remembered and and it was not written because he remembered what i had written you know 
Now that's mm. remarkable because that incident happened two years before uh, I met him. Uh, until then, we had never met, and and the man must have been writing and doing so many things, you know. Right. So so he had this amazing memory, the personal touch, knowing your names, knowing your children's names, wives' names, and all that. But therefore, if and then, very fortunately, very happily for me, the association continued. So if I were to with my Despite that, with my very limited understanding and perspective, give certain aspects about Admiral Avati. I'll say three, four things. One, mm -hmm. uh, a fantastic career naval officer in his own way, which includes right. everything from from doing very very courses, being being there, doing that, being involved in the war, being a war hero, and you know, uh, growing up to become the flag officer, commanding in chief of the Western Naval Command. So. Right. An outstanding naval career, you know. Mm. Uh, second, an, a lovely inspiration to many because of his various touches, as I told you. But the third and related to this is here was a great, charming personality. He was iconic. Right. He was iconic. He was flamboyant. He used mm -hmm. to dress in a wonderful yeah. way. In later years, that beard and all that. He has you know, a white flowing beard. I think he looks beard. like the quintessential, you know, admiral. Uh, even well in absolutely, at, at absolutely. Age, he still he, looks, uh, you know, he like looked that, and and he carried that right from the earliest days. He was he was six foot plus, mm -hmm. very smart, very handsome, very erect. I mean, there yeah. is one photograph. We'll try and put that out later. Of him striding outside the car in dress number. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, everything about that posture is perfect. You know, people yeah. half his age would feel ashamed seeing that there was a sense of purposefulness about everything he did. Uh, he was larger than life. You know? Right. He was larger than life. But and this is the next point. His larger than life issue was not limited to looking the part. I mean, mm. there are many who can be flamboyant, but. But he genuinely contributed. He he was he was a scholar, warrior, and many things, uh, you know, combined. Right. And I think we can see that in two or three different ways. Uh, one is in the way he was. He, he he always did things differently with a sense of style and splash and clash. Right. The second, uh, more substantially, group is this. I think he left a life, a, a legacy. You know, it mm. was not, it was not, with due respect to many who've done, it was not many of being a career naval officer. Uh, I think he left substantial contributions uh, in two fields, at least, at the very least. Um, one was in the field of ocean sailing uh, right. by, by his relentless pursuing. And this is all after he had retired, you know. Yeah. By his by his relentless pursuing, by his pushing people, by inspiring Dilip Donde, Tommy, Abhilash, Tommy, and then the six six um, uh, uh, lady officers led by Vartika. And over a period of time, he became a legend to them. To, I mean, Ratnakar, Dandekar, the builder, everything he did. We have discussed this before. You know, right. but it, it bears repetition. And to all of these people, he's a hero. You ask them. They'll, mm. they'll say he was the man who inspired and pushed us, you know. So I think his contribution in ocean sailing is legendary. And again, it begins with his own love for yachting and sailing. Uh, many right. people for, uh, forget that as the CNC, he was also the chief. Uh, he conducted the Asian Games 82, all the yachting right. events, you know. He was right. the chief right. conductor, so to say. Right. So he, his own, and today if India has made such a mark in, in you know, I, I I I mean I'm digressing a little, but you know, just a few days back, I heard that the foundation mm. stone had been laid for a Admiral Avati, um, you know, ocean sailing center. And can you uh, believe where this is? In a distant place, Mysore, far away from the coast. Oh wow! You know? And and he commanded the Mysore. So uh, yeah, yes, he commanded the Mysore. That's a fantastic <laughs> coincidence. Uh, yeah, right. and thanks for bringing that out. Uh, yeah. But my point was to say, far away from coast, also uh, inspired, mm -hmm. of course, by deeds of people like Donde and more recently Abhilash. But I right. think the father figure there, the inspirational mm -hmm. 
fountain head so to say for ocean sailing in india dr lavati the next has been equally his field now if this was all about action and achievement it is in the academic field of maritime history uh, right so from forming the maritime history society uh, to doing a lot of that i think we we, we talk about that separately but but um, you know we can we can follow it yeah, up yeah. I, i actually want to uh, you know uh, continue on that path right the maritime yeah. history society um i think it's um, uh, now a folklore right i mean the way he kind of uh, uh, as the uh, folkwif uh, as the western fleet commander ra uh, you know marched into the office of this then cnc another uh, iconic admiral rusi gandhi and said um, and demanded uh, you know that uh, you know they create something called the uh, maritime history society and i think uh, a princely sum of 1000 rupees if i'm not mistaken 1000 rupees, rupees. rupees was sanctioned by uh, the cnc uh, admiral gandhi and uh, you know uh, so you know really interested to kind of um, talk about um, you know the maritime history society and you know his baby and uh, you know uh, you know that whole journey yes i mean the maritime history society in some ways is a very very tangible product of his passion and interest for uh, matters maritime and matters historical but in many ways it's also symptomatic of his larger drive to popularize maritime mm. history you know right so like you brought out of course there was a legend uh, in terms of rusi gandhi and i think um, uh, if i'm not wrong that the chief of staff then was another legend poji natkarni you know yeah, right. uh, I, i think so and and uh, from all available accounts um, he was moved by a uh, article written in the times of india um, you know which which apparently was written by behram contractor again another big institution of mumbai right. uh, uh, i mean it came in that i think the city lights column or something but most people say that the style reflected that of where up contract a busy bee uh, right. but anyway to come to the maritime history society from taking up uh, rusi's bet uh, uh, that you will come back after a year uh, right. to developing it to developing it putting his energies into it uh, you know many things can start with a flourish but to mm. maintain that to keep that and now it's it's you know uh, 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 45 years in running i think that's remarkable and right. uh, uh, here we must, we should make mention of the early partnership that he did with professor arunachalam uh, another mm. big another big titan in the field of maritime history a great geographer right. a great writer and together i think these two people on the one hand they brought out a stream of academic publications right. on the other hand they also made sure that Uh, artifacts from the ships and all could come and be used uh, you know to to display so that in one way you know these artifacts don't get neglected after the sure. ship study commission you know some sort of archiving and whatever imperfect way happens mm-hmm. uh, also also i think the annual seminar after a while started to gain a huge amount of importance and if you see over 45 years he has mentored so many scholars he has pushed so many people to present papers i mean look ordinarily these are things that academic bodies do right navies right. are not meant to be so much in academic studies business they meant to fight wars and here was admiral avati pushing uh, pushing people to do it and the interesting thing is you know this this gentleman didn't even have a graduation degree i mean i think he used to <laughs> joke he used to joke that someone wanted to give him a honorary doctorate and phd and when they discovered that he had not even <laughs> graduated they they uh, i mean if anyone deserves an honorary doctorate it's him but but right. the point is he didn't let that phase him you know all this all this uh, issues about whether he had a degree or not whether he i mean he stood up to the best of scholars he could speak to them with positions of authority and most importantly he could make history interesting you know yeah. history would, would come live when he talked about it Right. and he was always encouraging no matter no matter how he, many times uh, you know young naval officers would realize that the depsets had not done a great job but he would encourage and say no you you did well you did fantastic right. so i think many of us uh, I, i mean i can i can at least say on record that um, there's commander mohan narayan um, you know commander unnit in many ways 
Commander Odetel Johnson, uh, myself, uh, you know, a couple of serving officers who I, I, I should not name, but they uh, because they're serving, but they're all hugely inspired by by his presence. And right. I think all, all of us got interested in maritime history because of him. Just mm. as many just as many sailors got interested in sailing because of him. Right. I think uh, India's maritime history society, India's maritime history journey in recent times uh, right. owes, owes a debt of gratitude uh, right. to, to Admiral Awati. Right. And this is coming on the back of, I think, a few weeks back, you you gave a talk at the MHS, uh, you know, <laughs> about another iconic leader whom we've already spoken about, Admiral yeah, Ronnie yeah. P. Um, yeah. But I think, um, you know, I think to finish it off, uh, about Admiral Avati, uh, he was a larger than life, uh, you know, person. As you said, yeah. any 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 stories, uh, you know, about that which illustrate his larger than life persona, uh, you know, uh, about the icon that he was, uh, oh. you know, before he. Plenty, plenty. I mean, uh, 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 I mean, my own stories relate to the time when he was probably, probably a little, a little, a little, um, uh, you know. Uh, 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 less inclined to do those things, uh, <laughs> though, of course, uh, though of course he was always flamboyantly dressed, beautifully, you know, turned out. I mean, you know, my wife Padmaja has taken a fantastic photograph, possibly one of the uh, uh, when he was discharged from Ashwini, uh, I think two or three, right. two or three months before he passed away, and mm. he was to flag off uh, sailing uh, uh, regate from Mumbai to I think Goa, and then and then proceed to to uh, uh, Fulton, uh, where he is staying. Yeah. And he he dressed up so beautifully for the occasion that my wife said she had irresistibly to take the camera and take a photograph. And, and will. But he always had that fantastic look about him. But if you go back before, like you said, I think larger than life was looked flamboyant. The way he spoke, a deep baritone like mm. Ronnie. Avati had a fantastic baritone, great sense of laughter. I mean, right. I remember, I remember one occasion, and this is again very similar to what Ronnie did. That when addressing the ship's company on INS Delhi, when right. I was, the, I was the commissioning SEO, and and I've never felt prouder than when he said, "I was the SEO of Delhi." <laughs> you know, that, that, that way he would talk. When he just just sort of pushed the mic away and said. Can you hear me at the back? And, and it was so resonant, it was so resounding. There was no problem. So there was that great baritone, the fantastic laughter, uh, the appearance, the flamboyant. But he had a personality of doing things differently. And and we can take some of. Uh, there are several things. One was when he was invited, I think, as a chief guest for a for a football event at the Cooperage Ground, and right. many. When many distinguished dignitaries came in car and people were waiting for him at the entrance in the car, uh, he landed on a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and that was so much him. Or uh, uh, there is there is a famous incident of him at a joint army-navy polo match, I think, or at some event uh, where, where he said, uh, you know, uh, summoning all his voice and baritone, he says, uh, in the army. So, so in the army, they wear uh, red cravats or scarf, uh, right. so that so that if they bleed, uh, the blood must not be seen. You know? right. <laughs> and then he paused for effect. He paused for effect and said, "In the navy, they wear blue scarves precisely for the same reason." <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Oh, such a beautiful way to show the navy is blue blooded, you know, yeah. uh, uh, things like that. Then his great legendary story of how he used the Rashtrapati Bhavan horses and steeds to go, right, right. to go, and he has himself written about this, about right. how he used to commute from his house to 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 Sena Bhavan. The one year that he spent in Delhi uh, for a few days on that on that uh, you know uh, horse, horse drawn driven. Bug horse-drawn buggy, horse-drawn carriage, uh, right. much to the annoyance of uh, people at that time. And he right. was told to desist. He was told to desist. But I can imagine what a figure he must have been, you know, in white, on that buggy, sitting next to that Risaldar. And, and <laughs> you know, 
know, almost like, you know, Admiral Bangara gives a beautiful account that in, in Iraq, I think they had gone to Basra and mm. uh, he, he asked for a white steed to be, um, you know, uh, made available to him next morning. Admiral Bangara was fleet staff and he didn't know where to. Uh, fortunately, the liaison officer uh, for the ship was, I think, Bangara's, you know, friend or long-term accomplice. So somehow they managed. And he says, he says, next day when Avati came in that, you know, uh, uh, riding I kit, and, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, uh, overall jumpers and, and, and the shoes and embarked on this fall, he says it was like royalty. People were looking all over on the streets of Basra seeing him. <laughs> right, right. And I'll tell you one personal event which I've told uh, Avati. In Seychelles, many years later, you know Seychelles, I was the DA in 2008. Right, right, of course. Yeah. In one of my visits, I met a very old man. You know, mm-hmm. I have gone to the war memorial there. and uh, not ah, okay. The come there. Commonwealth War Graves. The Commonwealth War Grave. And I met a very right. old man. And when I told him I was from the Indian Navy, he says, I remember long back, almost 30 years oh. ago, one of your ships had come, Admiral, Beard. The oh, wow. tall, handsome, and I realized, I realized, and again, Admiral Bangara has written about that too. How he was right. able to outwit a Russian admiral who was drinking a lot of vodka, and Avati was not drinking. But, <laughs> but you know, he asked his so flags to drink. Didn't he, he asked his flags to keep drinking, and the Russian admiral was so so impressed. <laughs> so, so these are the ways. These are the ways. Yeah. Many ways. I yeah. think, like with Ronnie P, you can say of Avati too. That everyone has a favorite Avati story, you know? right? Yeah. And and uh, there's no end to them. So so uh, so remarkable. Now the yeah. good part, the good part, Swaroop is, uh, we were all fortunate. People often ask, how did Admiral Avati loom? He hmm. he loomed large in the naval firmament, and right. uh, how and why he did that? I think uh, for two or three reasons. One, mm-hmm. we were fortunate that he was able to live relatively long. We all would yep. have said and we wanted him to score a century, but he was there up to 91. And he was active until the very last moment, you know. Sure. Uh, so, second is he continued to stay engaged with the Navy, whether in terms of maritime history, sailing, other things long after his retirement. He, he didn't. He didn't go and tend to the roses or he didn't fade away, you know. So right. he continued to remain engaged. He was an inspiration long after he left. Uh, and third, of course, is that he's his own persona, which combined everything from from flamboyance and one side, compassion to other, reaching out, memory. All of them made sure that, that you know, at some point of time, he came to be the most identifiable mascot of the Indian Navy. You know, mm-hmm. at least over the, uh, in the period between, say, 2000 to 2017, 18, around, when, right. when, you know, uh, when other senior great, great admirals of the past had become, for no fault of this, had become a bit of distant memory. I think Avati brought that touch. He showed us what it was to be in the Navy particular time. He brought that link between the past and present. I mean, he was simultaneously a traditionalist and yet he could relate to the smallest Very child, the smallest woman, and he could do that. And of right. course, uh, he his love for chocolates, glass, the good things of life, you know, right. made it seem like so he was cute. I mean, I remember him telling me that uh, I've got to take chocolates for Sandhya when I go mm. when uh, being discharged from hospital. And, and he, oh, wow. he, he, the day before he was discharged, he went out to shop for chocolate. To take for his wife. So I think these are the many things that that make out uh, for a remarkable person. Remarkable. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is a wonderful little surprise for you all. Kurbi and Vedanta right opposite me here in the in the in my room in Ashini, sitting, and we are talking, chatting over. He just borrowed a. a Taken away Toblerone chocolate from my fridge. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. I'm sure you are, from the looks of it. And I'm very, very sure that you are going to finish this race at the top. That's it. That's all I'll say.
I will, we were just saying we'll be very happy if you just finish the race. Well, no, I won't be happy with that. I want you to finish number one, which I'm sure you'll do. You'll overtake all these fast, slim boats uh, when they get into difficulties in the Southern Ocean. And you'll overhaul them. I'm very sure about that. Good luck, Abhi. On that very lovely note, uh, I think, um, you know, we'll end the episode. Uh, you know, we've spoken about this uh, legend, this, um, you know, icon of the Indian Navy, uh, Admiral Avati. Uh, thanks so much uh, for joining us.